Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Dungeons and & Dragons, and we're going to talk about the most powerful aspect of Dungeons and & Dragons in 2024, which is Grow by Group. So what is Grow by Group? So Grow by Group is a very special part of Dungeons & Dragons that come, in my humble opinion, that comes specifically from the legacy of Gary Gygax. So Gary Gygax set into position um, this ability, every Dungeons & Dragons table is a group. It's two to six people, right? And Gary put into this, Gary put in, built directly into Dungeons & Dragons, this grow by group aspect, which is we all arrive, we're all at the table, we all have our books, we all have our, we all have, we're all at the physical table, we all have our physical books, we all have our physical dice, and we grow together. No one is left behind, and we all have a basic minimum, right? And much and none of this was said. It's simply demanded by Dungeons and Dragons itself. Okay, so let's walk it through. So we've already talked about the Goblin Chop Nothing game, right? What you need to escape. So you've already escaped that, and you've moved into a care about group. That care about group has transitioned to a care for group. Okay, so you've arrived at the place of a care for group. Once you're there, you can you can establish the bare minimum for every single person at the table. And what is that bare minimum? We are going to grow as a group so that every single one of us has the following. And what is the following? It is an intellectual platform. And an emotional range, an, em an emotional range, an emotional range, right? And uh, last, a spiritual equilibrium. Okay. So, what are these? What are you talking about, Scott? So, first of all, an intellectual platform. Every single person at the table needs to be able to express their intelligence. Are they intelligent? Yes, they are. How do I know that? Because they already passed the ante of they've already passed the ante of 1,150 pages of reading just to participate in Dungeons & Dragons, right? It, that's what the, the new 384 core rule books, you have to be, the way, you have to have a wherewithal to read 1,150 pages to play Dungeons & Dragons at, to play Dungeons & Dragons. No unintelligent people do that, right? So that's one thing. You don't need, so, and I, this will get weird. Okay, let's get there. You don't have to do a thing to establish the, the intellectual platform. This is free. This is free from Dungeons and Dragons, okay? You're, everybody at the table is already massively intelligent. By stacking identities, right, you guarantee that they're all gonna need libraries, they're all gonna need focus, they're all gonna need attention, right? And they're gonna need to apply those brain cells rigorously. So intellectual platform is the first pillar everybody gets this at the table there's no work to be done it's for free it, it, it's it's guaranteed by the structure of Dungeons and Dragons itself so the intellectual platform but you have to play you have to get in you have to run you have to play you have to be a dungeon master you have to be a dragon master if you don't do those things if you don't show up every week you won't have an intellectual platform right but if you do it's free it's guaranteed right it, it, it comes with the participation. All right, so let's talk about emotional range. This is not free, okay? So we are growing together as a group. We're saying, okay, we're getting together every single week. We care about each other. We care for each other, right? And we are setting a minimum that at every single person at this table has an intellectual platform and an emotional range and a spiritual equilibrium. So what is the emotional range, okay? So an emotional range, is being able to express the right emotion at the right time um, the majority of the time. And Americans are terrible at this. So first of all, can you? Um, what is emotional range? Caring about yourself, caring about others, and caring about all, okay? So, and what this means is like, for instance, have you ever been trapped in a conversation, right? Somebody would be like, oh, hey, let me tell you about the grout in my tub. And they'll talk for 45 minutes about the ground in their tub and say, hey, I'll see you tomorrow, right? That person has no emotional range. They don't understand 
that conversations are emotional tasks and that they take care and they take um, sacrifice, right? Also, um, they don't care about others. Emotion is caring for others and expressing that through empathy, through sympathy, even sometimes through vexation, right? And all, and so emotional range is being able to match your emotions to the situation you're in all the time. Now, how, how on earth are we going to give an emotional range to every dragon master at the table? How are we going to give an emotional range to a dungeon master at the table? Well, it's this identity stacking. It's this manifest, it's this manifold sentient, manifold sentience, right? You are saying, I have seen the sunrise on 30 worlds. I've seen my friends die. I've seen my friends get fortunes. I've seen my friends, um, you know, be harmed. I've seen my friends go through loss, right? And the reality is in an American life, first of all, it's difficult to even make friends, right? But at the D&D table, you make friends all the time. You make rivals, you make enemies, and you need to express the right emotions at the right time, right? And Guns and Dragons builds a um, structure where this can happen. It builds a literal structure where you are forced to express the right emotions that your dungeon masters and your dragon masters would be like, hey, dude, no, you can't go loot that body, right? Like, the elf just died. But we've been we've been adventuring them for them seven months, right? Get your greedy butt back here, and we're going to mourn over this elf. And yes, the bugbears may sweep up the gold and the gems, right? But we're going to mourn, right? And you're like, well, wait, no, no, no. I want to my player character to get the gold and the gems. I don't care what you want. Your player character sat at a fire, you know, at a fireside chat with them and learned about his brother's name, right? You are not playing your character and you suck and you're going to fix it or you're going to get out of the table, right? Oh, oh, you want to stay here with the rest of us? Yeah, okay. Express the right emotion. So it's establishing an emotional range, okay? Last, a spiritual equilibrium. So this is a secular group, right? The Dungeons and Dragons group is never a sacred group. I, never in my life have I seen six evangelical, uh, trust and believe, you will never find six evangelical Christians at a Dungeons and Dragons table together. It's never happened once in the eternity, in the in the, in the in, in the history of the earth. It's never happened, all right? So, so since this is a secular group, we can't say to them, hey, you need to be an evangelical, evangelical Christian. But we can say, hey, you need to be an evangelical Christian or a Buddhist or a uh, or a Muslim or a Shintoist. You're an atheist or you're an agnostic. You suck. Realize you need spiritual equilibrium. Dungeons and Dragons teaches us all realms have gods. Oh, Dark Sun, thank you. I hear you. Uh, no, that's why Dark Sun is not in uh, Dungeons and Dragons VE. Uh, yeah, they tried that. It was a complete and utter failure. Every single active supported background has deities an entire pantheon on, on them and that is a statement to you that if you are an atheist or you are agnostic you suck get good spiritual equilibrium you need to understand irl that we live in a spiritual world right and the idea that you die and nothing happens is lame and you really should be at this table if that's what you believe in my humble opinion okay I believe that that Grow As Group establishes six people who are who have an intellectual platform and, a, and an established who have an established intellectual platform, an established mo emotional range, and an established um, spiritual equilibrium. Right now, you're like, wait a second, Scott. I think D and D does make space for atheists and agnostics. Okay, I'm willing to hear you, right? But at minimum, what I'm saying is still correct, right? First of all, you no one accepts that at the D&D table. So first of all, it's not even discussed in the world, in the lore, in the worlds. There are no godless worlds in Dungeons and Dragons. None, right? Every single realm has pantheons of deities, right? And so if you want to sit at the table as atheist or agnostic, at minimum, you're going to need to theologically defend that, right, and explain it to people. 
because it doesn't fit with Dungeons and Dragons. It doesn't fit with what Gary established. And the reason why is Gary established this grow as group structure, right? That you need, and that every single person at the table needs an established intellectual platform, an established emotional range, and an established spiritual equilibrium, in my humble opinion. Every single word you just heard is my humble opinion. Nothing more, nothing less. The important part is when I get to hear your humble opinion, when you get in the comments and send your traffic. Please consider liking and subscribing and have a fetch millennium.